Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, we're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, in life, I don't believe you can go by personas. Right, someone who comes across as really polished, really together, um, corporate personas, can sometimes have real problems. Right, so it is in life, so it is in boxing. Carlos Molina, a fighter who I think is underrated, a fighter who famously fought to a draw against Arislandi Lara. And there are many who saw that fight who thought Molina won the fight. Has serious problems outside of the ring. Now I'm talking about the Carlos Molina who is the champion at 154 pounds. Just understand that that fighter, the fighter who fought James Kirkland, right? The fighter who fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. That's not the Carlos Molina who will be fighting Adrian Broner. Okay, don't make the mistake. That Carlos Molina is an elite fighter. He's a gambler's dream. Many in the public don't know about him. Quite frankly, he's better than advertised. Now that Carlos Molina, who has issues, as I said, Google him, right? Isn't the Carlos Molina here the Carlos Molina who's fighting Adrian Broner hasn't fought in more than a year. Doesn't weigh 154 pounds. In fact, he's a 140 pounder. He hasn't knocked out anyone since 2010. Right, so that means no KOs in 2011, no KOs in 2012. Right? He didn't even fight in 2013. You get the idea. Now it's 2014. Right? The drought's been so long, I'm almost running out of fingers on this hand. Let me also point out that in 2011, and keep in mind, he didn't fight in 2013. So when I refer to a 2011 fight, I'm referring to one of his later fights. In 2011, he actually had a draw against a fighter with a five win, four loss, and two tie record. In other words, they threw him in the ring with a guy who should not have hung with him. And he almost lost the fight. Now think defense. You're going to need defense against Adrian Broner, right? Either a great defense or a great offense. Let's think defensively and keep in mind, this guy has a knockout ratio of less than 40%. So the punching power that Broner had to worry about against heavy-handed Marcus Maidana isn't a concern in this fight. So since Molina really isn't going to knock out Adrian Broner, let's get real. If you're thinking about the Molina by KO prop, I think you should think again. Let's look at Molina's defense. Now I'm guessing people realize that Adrian Broner's career is in crisis. We'll get to that in a moment. I'm sure people realize that Broner would like nothing better than a definitive dramatic win here. A stoppage. Well, what I want you to consider is the fact that against Amir Khan, Carlos Molina actually got hit with 56%. Right? Very high by boxing standards. 56% of Amir Khan's power punches. So, if Adrian Broner is who we think he is, he should dismantle Carlos Molina. Right? Molina, not a lot of power. Broner should be able to be on his front foot, hunting him down. Right? And, unlike Paulie Malinaji, 
this guy gets hit with a high percentage of his opponent's power punches. By the way, the Khan copy box numbers are really disturbing because you'll see Khan threw a lot of jabs in the fight and landed over 30% of them. So understand Molina wasn't blocking Khan's power shots, nor was he defending Khan's jab. Right? Molina got stopped in the fight, ended up retiring. Now let's talk about Adrian Broner. Now you heard me say personas really don't matter that much. Look at the guy's skills. I believe personas matter greatly in a social context. Right? My favorite fighter ever is Jack Johnson. Right? Loved his persona. Ali's also a favorite. I believe his persona was very important to the sport and to the world, quite frankly, in the 1960s. Right? But understand, when I see a guy come in as if he's invincible and stuff like that, when I see a guy with the initials AB come in the ring with trunks that read about billiards, right, and the guy is not yet 25 years old, and the guy, regardless of whatever belt he has around his waist, is relatively untested at 147 pounds, then to me the persona is more of a marketing gimmick than it is really what the guy truly believes about himself. Right? Well, I'll just put it to you this way. Adrian Broner got dismantled by slow-footed Marcus Maidana. When Broner gets dropped early and gets off the canvas after the first knockdown, he's almost out on his feet. His body is not cooperating. That's the opposite of a flash knockdown. Right? He had to look at his corner and shake his head. Because his corner needed to know whether they needed to stop the fight. That was the level of seriousness. Right? Understand, that's not the only time in that fight that Broner hits the canvas. Now, a few years ago here online, I made the argument that I thought lightweight champion, who I think is very underrated, guy named Miguel Vasquez, would beat Adrian Broner, who at the time was very highly rated. I made the argument that Broner, who I did not expect, would lose the Maidana fight. Right? That fight surprised me. But I made the argument that Broner was too wide stanced. Didn't move well enough in the ring. In fact, I picked Paulie Malinaggio for Broner. Right? And let's remember, let's be clear here. Officially, that fight's a split decision. Right? That's a split decision. Broder did not dominate Paulie Malinaggi. Well, I know no one's talking about foot speed. Foot speed wasn't the issue with Marcus Maidana, right? Um, you know, Maidana, well, in a sense it was, because Broner couldn't move away from Maidana, right? But Maidana didn't have blinding foot speed. But my point to you is Broner has become so stationary, in my opinion, in the ring, that I believe he'd lose to Manny Pacquiao. I believe he'd lose to Timothy Bradley if Bradley's legs stay healthy for 12 rounds and Bradley doesn't lose his head and decide to go for the KO in the second round of the fight. Right? There are a lot of people around Broner. Floyd Mayweather being one of them who have said to Broner, you need to stay at 140 pounds. Now understand, this is a guy who already held a belt at 147. But let's think it through. Sometimes the people tell you to go to a weight class not because you're not comfortable at 147 pounds, not because you aren't competitive at 147 pounds physically. Broner can carry 147 pounds. But sometimes they're telling you to leave the division because stylistically you don't match up in the division. Right? Pacquiao, 147. Bradley, 147. Mayweather, 147. I would argue that Keith Thurman hits at least as hard, I'm sure he hits harder, than Adrian Broner 
and moves better than Adrian Broner. Keith Thurman, 147. Kel Brook, 147. If you're a guy who can't move that well against these guys who move better than you, then 147 is a problem, right? Let me offer some crazy advice. It's going to be crazy. But, you know, Broner, realistically, with his defensive skills, you know, might be better served, quite frankly, not just at 140, but perhaps at 154, right? He'll have to be carefully matched, just like Canelo has been carefully matched, to hide average foot speed. In other words, you don't want to put Broner in the ring against Eris Landy Lara, who would just dance outside of him and who has the boxing skills to outbox him, right? You would want to put Broner in against more stationary guys. I actually think Broner would be a fan favorite at 154 because he'd be physically shorter than a lot of the guys and he would be fending them off. In other words, it'd be a good visual. He might have the same thing going for him at 154 that Mayweather has right now at 147. A lot of guys thinking that they can overpower him and then running into great defense. The problem with Broner though is when he faces a boxer puncher, a guy who can move, a guy who he won't be able to find in the ring, who could come in and hot shot him with big punches. Right? So 147 isn't a great place for him. Let's also get real here. His career is in crisis. Right? You lose at 147 after touting yourself as being about billions and the person you lose to isn't Mayweather. It isn't Pacquiao. It isn't Bradley. It isn't Marquez. It's Marcus Maidana, who was on the canvas against Victor Ortiz and who got shut out, really, by Devin Alexander. Right? You know, quite frankly, Devin Alexander is another guy who Adrian Broner would have to worry about at 147 pounds. So instead of being about billions, Broner now is about surviving, right? He's finding out that he's not the big fish in the pond. He's finding out that the pond has many big fishes. So he needs a dramatic performance here, right? His career hangs in the balance. That Madonna fight followed a less than inspiring Paulie Malignaggi fight, right? You saw where movement gives Broner problems. I'm expecting Broner to win this fight big. I'm expecting this to be the perfect bounce back fight for him, right? It's at 140, not 147. Let's all pay close attention to the weigh-in later today because Broner famously did poorly at an earlier weigh-in where he missed weight by several pounds. I'm guessing there's a reason. Broner was up in the 147 neighborhood, right? It's because I believe Broner would have a hard time making weight at lighter weights, right? If I'm Broner and if training camp has been hell because I've had to not fight at 147, but I've had to deal with making weight at 140. I hope he considers fighting at 154. Obviously, he should stay away from Floyd Mayweather at any weight. Right? But Broner matched against the right opponent. I believe a Broner-Canelo fight. And keep in mind, Canelo hits much harder than Broner. Right? The secret to Canelo is he is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. Right? Just look at how Alfredo Angulo's head snaps right at the end of that fight. Right? He is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. But Broner defensively would be able to hang with someone like Saul Alvarez. 
right? Broner would be able to take away a lot of what Saul Alvarez throws at him. Right? And the punches would come from more orthodox angles than Marcus Maidana's punches. Well, in any event, on paper, this is a mismatch. Right? Broner should beat Car this Carlos Molina rather easily. Keep in mind, Molina is shaking off more than a year of rust. And let's be clear, before he went on the hiatus, he wasn't a defensive wizard. Right, Amir Khan was a big step up for him. He couldn't block Khan's jab. He couldn't block more than 50% of Khan's power punches. I'm expecting a statement fight here. I'm expecting Broner to go for the KO. In any event, I'm expecting Broner to win this fight decisively. Don't confuse this Carlos Molina with the champ at 154 pounds. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and let me just point out, life's unfair. Boxing's unfair. Some divisions seem to be pretty empty. It seems like if you have a pulse and any boxing ability, you can be a star at cruiserweight. But that's not the case at 147 pounds, right? The water is deep. So as you watch this fight at 140, just understand the water is so deep at 147 that after getting his butt kicked at 147, Adrian Broner is fighting this fight at 140 pounds. Let me also point out too, at 140 pounds, Broner needs to be careful because if some of the lighter guys, your Keith Gamboa, Miguel Vasquez, Terrence Crawford decide to gain weight, then the water at 140 might get deep in a hurry as well. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.